In this video, we're going to talk about strategies for trading the closing 30 minutes session. Stay tuned. Hey guys, a very warm welcome to you. So in this video, I want to talk about trading the close and I'm going to be very specific and I'm going to talk about from an indice perspective or an index perspective. So this is for day traders who like to day trade things like the S&P 500, US uh, 30, Dow, Dow Jones, however you want to call it, or the DAX, the FTSE, that kind of thing, CAC, whatever it may be. Specifically for indices, it does work on other stuff, but this is something that I look for very, very often. It's one of my kind of favorite strategies in the right condition. So let me share it with you and let me talk about how I scan screen and what I look for. So what I've got up here is um, S&P 500 spiders ETF now the reason I've used this is because the the spy ETF on this chart anyway is very clear to see when it's very clear to see when the closes I don't have to put up you know lines if I'm using the DAX or the Dow um, I'm because the S&P 500 or the spy ETF is a cash kind of based source of stock it's similar to a stock it's an ETF obviously but it trades like a stock in other words there's an opening session there's an opening bell and there's a closing bell uh, it's pre and post market but it's better from a chart perspective excuse me so we can see exactly when the close is so this is why I'm using it so the numbers don't really matter it's just the pattern that matters this pattern here is going to mirror itself on the S&P 500 futures or the S&P 500 CFD spread bet whatever and probably very similar on the Dow as well so that's all we're looking for Let's clear that up. Okay, right. So what I'm looking for, well, the close to me is, um, it can be a bit broader than this, but let's focus on this. I've got more strategies for this for, for a broader time period, but let's talk about the last 30 minutes. Why is the last 30 minutes of trade very, very important? It's important because, you know, everybody has the same, um, the same end in mind or the same kind of timestamp end. At nine o'clock UK time or 4.30 UK time, depending on what we're trading, the bell is going to ring. You cannot trade, stock, you, you can trade after market with US stocks, but let's say UK, you cannot trade anything stocks wise after that bell. And even the US liquidity just goes out the door um, for big kind of volume stuff after that nine o'clock UK time bell. So everybody has that time constraint on them, which is what makes the close such a lovely opportunity for traders if we have the right conditions. Because everybody knowing they've got that time constraint, it feels the pressure, they've got to get stuff done. Either they've had orders to work throughout the day that they've got to do, either they want to square off orders that they've had in the day, trades they've had in the day into the close, <coughs> into the close excuse me, Either they've had an order coming through that they've got to execute and get done before the bell. Either they've got to, whatever, you get the point. The point is with everyone having that same, same time stamp, same time reference, it makes things interesting. So one thing we can say is that we've got to be careful of is that we don't assume volatility because very often it can just be quiet. So we've got to kind of see a little bit of a clue first before we want to get involved in volatility, before we want to really press it. But the main characteristic of all these trades that we'll talk about in a second is that we're looking to hold right until the close. The point is if we get direction right and we get on the end of something, just hold it until that closing bell because majority of the time that's gonna give us the best exit. Yes, we're not gonna get the perfect exit, but it takes the stress of the exit out of us. We've got a stop loss in place, but in the day we wanna trade and hold the thing to the opening bell. So what are we looking for? We're looking for good, a volume and movement in one direction. So let's say, say we had a, on a five minute chart as we are here, if we're seeing a solid candle on a five minute in one direction, we can very simply simply even say, hey, let's let's follow that move. Let's use a stop with the width of that candle or the, the, the range of that candle and, and trade it because we think that there is, you know, a flurry of order flow coming in and we want to get involved in that. So let's follow that order flow uh, you know, and let's see what happens. And, you know, maybe that work, Maybe that won't work, but it's a kind of a benchmark that we can use and a structure we can use. So let's talk about different types of day. And in fact, it works more often than not. If you look, you know, if we're just eyeballing some of these charts here, um, you, know, you can kind of see what's happened. Now, what's happened prior to that last 30 minutes is the most important thing. If we've been sitting around doing nothing, chopping around, um, we're in the middle of the range, for example, let's say the range of the day has been there, uh, you know, 
the likelihood is we're probably not going to get any flurry or i wouldn't personally be playing for a big flurry because i would be saying well no one's really that bothered about it they've had all that time to do the orders um you know what's going to happen maybe nothing's happening with one caveat to that and i'll skip straight skip straight to this is that at the end of the month okay or the beginning of the month then i would definitely be looking for that last 30 minutes drive in one direction or another and clues that would be obviously volume range of the first five minute bar first 15 minute bar whatever we're looking so i would disregard what's happened before in the day because i think the first of the quarter the last of the quarter the last of the month first of the month are pretty pretty important as are things that if you've got a long weekend and there's perhaps some event risk coming on the weekend as well that would maybe make me want to jump on some momentum uh, as well uh, but the i'm digressing i'm losing my train of thought but what i wanted to say is hey what we want to do is we're trying to look at momentum i'm not trying to be clever by fading momentum here that's my other golden rule is hey when i see momentum in the last 30 minutes i just want to get on it or i want to leave it i don't want to be clever and try and fade it it's a case of if i think the supply demand imbalance has shifted it's either going to stay in that direction or or it's not you know and i don't want to try and be clever enough to fade it because my assumption is who who's gonna who's gonna fade that that's my assumption whether it's right or wrong so let's look at the promises we could have we could have a trend day as well if we've got a big trend day uptrend day we 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 may get a little bit of a, a, a kind of pullback as people take a little bit of profits um that kind of thing that often happens at trend day. And in fact you see on this one here we had a little bit of a pullback and i think there was another we had a much more of, more of a broader pullback um but more exciting to me there's a little bit of a pullback on that one a little bit of a pullback on that one um but more exciting to me guys is a downtrend day i haven't had a, haven't had a heavy, heavy one of those for a while but a downtrend day the last 30 minutes because people are a bit more concerned about the risk you get a big beastly down move you get a little bit of kind of congestion maybe or a pullback often you're getting a massive supply demand imbalance because nobody wants to buy at the end of a really heavy downtrend day because they're nervous that there is you know reason for that they're nervous that they're going to gap the next day but a lot of people do want to sell they want to hedge they want to do they want to get out of position there's a bit more fear in the market out there isn't there so when you have a down, heavy downtrend day, that last 30 minute closing session trade, I'm gonna try to find one here. There's not a bad one there. You know, there's a 30, uh, 8.30 there. And you can see really, you know, just sort of press the uh, press the throttle right into that close, probably more aggressively than, uh, apart from the open, obviously. Uh, if I can draw. Uh, apart from the open, a really aggressive kind of close. And that, that's very common. That's very common on downtrend days. So if we got a heavy downtrend day, I'm really looking to the close for it to kind of take out the, the any remaining stops we had under the low and just keep pressing and pressing and pressing. Because of that time constraint, because of the concern of risk, because of not wanting to have risk on, because of the unusual nature of downtrends versus uptrends, then we get that supply demand imbalance. And as a day trader, I've had very many successful endings of the day by really pressing aggressively that kind of final 30 minutes under the right conditions all right guys there's just some ideas on why i think the final 30 minutes is a great time to trade and uh, let me know your thoughts on that if you've got a specific strategy you'd like to share we'll be interested to hear it um anything else as well stick in the comments below always interested to hear what you guys have got to say about that so good trading guys take care see you in the next video Bye bye